Hello, my name is Taya. I built and designed these guitars. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about what they can do. And also about the thought behind them, because they have been born out of a, uh, out of a background of mine, which is flamenco and classical guitar, in which I would just bring one guitar to the show. I would have a performance and one guitar could do it all, could cover, uh, for example, in flamenco, dance accompaniment, vocal accompaniment, my solo pieces, modern and uh, the traditional style, the, the stuff I learned from the gypsies in the little villages in the hills from Andalusia. Um, I would bring one guitar to the show and then if I had an electric performance, I would bring three or four to cover all the styles and all the sounds that I needed. And I always wondered, why is this? You know, after so many late nights of uh, packing up and loading up, you go, why is this? Why am I carrying all these guitars? Um, coming from the other background, you really do not accept the, uh, the standard electric thinking that there is just no other way. So I set out to find another way. And maybe if you wanted the sound of a 58 Strat, you better get a 58 Strat. However, if you're on a stage in, a, in the middle of a solo and you want to call up that sound, it doesn't have to be dead on, dead on, just to, to, to satisfy yourself. The, um, the thought behind it was the guitar in itself is just wood and coils. And if I make the guitar itself uh, broadband, then I just have to filter out what I don't need at a certain point uh, to get a sound that I want. So this, the guitar I'm holding right now, is the, my model La Llama, which is just Spanish for the flame. Must be obvious why. Uh, this is a A-series guitar, which is really the, uh, the high end, really the, the, gets the final, the tweaks. You know, I can, I can spend a lot of time with these guitars before I send them out to the customer, so that they're absolutely to perfection. All of it is hand engraved. Uh, there's a level of opulence to these guitars that is kind of over the top, but you really, really get a, a, good, um, a good tool to actually perform your music with. Now, um, this specific configuration, the three pickup, is uh, my personal favorite. Uh, many people think that a Les Paul shaped guitar should have two pickups. I just see two pickups as four coils and six, uh, three pickups, I see it as six coils. So I have two more coils to play with in my weird um, groundbreaking electric guitar circuitry. Because I have not wired up this stuff like uh, your regular guitar. A little bit more about that in a moment. Let's first have a look. Um, this guitar reminds you more than anything of a Les Paul shape. So let's have a look if it can actually deliver that and give you that big guitar sounds that we've adored since the late 60s, early 70s. <laughs> Uh, I think I can do it. So the volume knob does not act like your uh, regular guitar volume knob. Well, it's just a, uh, a resistor. Top is hot, uh, bottom is ground, and there's a taper on it. And you either um, tap the, guitar, the pickup at its maximum, or you roll it down all the way to ground, where it has nothing, obviously, just short it out. This is wired up a little bit different, and it's not just a treble bleed cap, <coughs> which I think are a bit on the aggressive side. It's a bit more circuitry behind it. It is all passive. I cannot state that enough. With all the versatility of this guitar, it is still just the classic configuration of coils driving your uh, resistors and capacitors and driving the input stage of, of an amplifier. So, let's have a look. If I turn it all the way up, I have the big, you know, the big tone. If, when I start turning it down, it's, it starts feeling as if I'm playing on one of, those, uh, one of those mini humbucker guitars. You still have the punch, you still have the power, but you have more clarity. Let's have a look. 
it's all the way up slightly down a little more down you can hear this it retains the bite but it just adds clarity to it See, so then I can roll up again for a solo. Okay, what if I rolled it all the way down? It's almost like you go to almost like uh, uh, you go really, really clean. But you're still not on the cleanest that this guitar can go. Because I have another uh, control on here, which is called the mood knob. What the mood knob does, it basically changes, and we all know how you have uh, the Leicester side of things and the Leo side of things on the opposite sides of the aisle. So let's see what it does when I roll the mood knob all the way down. <laughs> It does that, which comes in really handy when you have one of those songs lined up in the repertoire. Now you don't have to do a guitar change, you can just roll on the knobs a little bit and get that tone. Since it is not a switch, but it is a control, I can actually vary between the two of them. And this, by the way, is not a straight up coil tab. Again, I have six coils to play around with, and I certainly do so using this circuitry. So. It's a, it's a very involved circuit, and um, yes, I have it black boxed, so do not dive in. Uh, let's see. Sometimes you have kind of like a Telecaster that's kind of a bit more punchy and not so much twangy. So let's see if I can emulate that. Or a bit more. just have a little more punch and you can just arrange for that control to sit anywhere you want for a specific moment. Now do not forget to also take into consideration that on my guitars this is very dependent on the volume control. This is very interactive. It's like uh, the tone controls on your uh, non um tone stack inside an amplifier. You roll one knob, you actually change the other. You change the reach of the other, so you may have to correct that. So keep that in mind. There's another thing uh, we need to get out of the way. This is switching. I call this down, bridge pickup. I call this position number one, so that there's no confusion when I go to two, three, four, five. Okay, having said that, um, for those people who know me a little bit, they will not be surprised that also the tone control on my guitar works different from all other guitars. I simply cannot leave uh, stuff uh, alone, even if it functions well enough. Let's see where we can take it. So this tone control actually works different and uh, very specifically in the sense that it doesn't just roll off treble. It repositions the frequency curve and you go to uh, mid-range, lower mid-range, and you start driving your amp in a different way, which translates itself into some really cool tones. For example, if you wanted to uh, emulate the sound of a big Les Paul, and um, you would think there was a bit too much bright on tap if you had the tone control all the way on 10. Normally you don't really touch the tone control that much, but on this guitar you should, because uh, listen to it when, I have it, all, when I have the volume all the way up, you have a really characteristic bite to it, almost like an SG, but with more bottom end under it. You hear the little bite, the edge on the tone. Now we go with the volume to about, we go with the volume to about, uh, the tone to about seven, roll the volume all the way up again, and you will hear more bigness to the tone. It's actually, it doesn't turn down, it actually makes the guitar sound bigger. Um, 
and I can roll it further down and go into the territory of those famous uh, fixed wah position sounds and make it sound really nasal. Obviously, since this is all passive and there's no batteries or uh, transistors or whatever involved, you can't really all the way get to a, uh, the position, you know, the, they call it the cocked wah position uh, sound. You, you can't get all the way there, but you can get pretty close. Um, that is the bridge pickup. Now let's go to the other extreme, position number five, the neck pickup all by itself. And you basically roll through the same, um, the same array of sounds on the neck pickup. You've got the big tones. And when you start turning down, you start clearing it up. Etc. Turn it down further, it clears up even further. But it, it retains that bigness of sound. Now what happens if you turn the mood knob all the way down? You almost turn it into uh, one of Leo's creations. And now we're going to play around with the tone knob on this. Especially interesting when you turn the tone knob all the way down, you turn the volume all the way up, and it's almost like you're playing a fast face, a fast face between your uh, guitar and amp. Again, there is no active circuitry in this. It's all done by hitting your preamp of the, of the amplifier with a different guitar signal. <laughs> You even have that weird uh, sub harmonic that the uh, first face creates on the guitar, but it's done all in your, in your uh, preamp. It's just hitting it different. What you're doing now is you're hitting it with a lot of low, very low mid range, and it just starts reacting that, provided you have it up loud enough, of course. You can hear the sub harmonic going. So this is the neck pickup, and obvious, um, when you have one of these, you should sit there for an afternoon and just experiment with it, and you will come up with a lot of other tones, because obviously every uh, one-eighth of a turn makes a huge difference to the sound, and since it's also interactive, the, the uh, possibilities are almost endless. All right, let's go to what I consider position number three, and even if you started counting from the other side, it would still be position number three, the middle position. I address the neck pickup and the bridge pickup right now. And you can get some really uh, cool bluesy sounds out of that. Turn them up a little bit. Now if you roll the volumes down a little bit, and you roll the mood knob down, you again turn it into almost a different guitar, you know? Volume 
volumes down even further. Uh, this is all good and well, but you can actually make it even more useful by I roll the moon up up again. I will show you something on um, on a, a regularly wired electric guitar with uh, two pickups. Let's disregard the middle pickup for a second. I now have the outside pickups on. When I bring one up and the other one all the way down, the guitar is shorted out. You know, when you have uh, this position on a, a Les Paul, for example, you have one pickup up and the other pickup all the way turned off. The guitar is actually shorted out. There is nothing at the, uh, at the output. With this guitar, because uh, the way I'm using the volume control uh, circuitry, which is basically a 1930s hi-fi uh, configuration that I tweaked to be uh, useful for the electric guitar. With this uh, configuration, it's almost like bringing up faders on two channels of a mixing desk. When you bring up the one fader, it changes nothing to the other channel which is very useful when you have both pickups on at the same time. For example, let's say I'm playing a rhythm on the bridge pickup and I think it sounds a little bit lacking in depth and I want to just bring up some, some warmth on it. I start bringing up this pickup until I have the sound that I want. <laughs> And I can just flavor it in, almost like you flavor your coffee when you add cream and sugar. Um, this is really useful for um, when you have both pickups on, obviously also for the mood knob. On zero, when you, have the, uh, when you play again that rhythm. Bring up the neck pickup. And you can just add the amount of warmth that you want. Great. Let's go to position two. Just one down from three in my world. It's actually the same thing. What I really use this position for, you have now bridge pickup and middle pickup. Middle pickup now being controlled by this volume knob that you just had for the neck pickup. So, you bring up your bridge pickup and you get a really nice rhythm sound and you go, I want it a bit fatter, you know? So you just bring up the middle pickup. Which is just instead of... Having just a bright, you add a little bit of warmth to it. The really cool thing of this is, and I can't roll the volumes down right now, um, the really cool thing of it is that if you have a balance that you like, if you flip the switch from position 2 to position 3, you actually, instead of activating this pickup alongside with the bridge pickup, you're activating the neck pickup alongside with the bridge pickup. So you just go from middle to neck and the balance remains the same. So, this would be bridge all by itself, you know. Bridge and middle. Bridge and neck. And as you can tell, it sort of kind of, it has a different flavor to the tone, but it doesn't change it completely. So you can find your own um, needed uh, voice at the song that you uh, happen to be playing at, at that moment. Let's try and dial the, uh, the balance up again, more or less like I had it. I'm going to go to uh, bridge and middle, so position two, and I'm going to use the mood knob. So I have a really rocking song going here, but it has a kind of a fendery bridge. Turn the mood knob all the way. Up all the way up. And there you go. You have all those tones just under the swing of one knob because you're in this position. Now the great thing is also 
When I go to a solo right now, all I do is actually turn up the bridge pickup all the way because uh, I still have that little extra fatness of the middle pickup under it without it actually muddying up the tone. So I just came from. Go to this. And then go to the solo. That's how that works. And it gives you an enormous advantage because all of this is done without pedals. And um, it is just the purest sound that you can get. It's just going from the guitar straight into the amp. And you can have all those tones without even touching a pedal board. Now, we've got some extra goodies, especially in the three pickups. We have uh, some extra goodies here. Um, let's first go to a... Um, a position that is also available on the two pickup guitars and it is the Peter Green sound. Um, I wish I had a way of embellishing the story because I've told it a few times but Peter Green was a great British blues guitar player from the late 60s and um, he played in, um, in uh, the uh, John Mayles Blues Breakers and he played in uh, Fleetwood Mac um, he uh, replaced Eric Clapton in the Blues Breakers, which is not an easy job to do. And he did it really well. So he was uh, on tour with them, with the Blues Breakers, in the United States in uh, 1968, when his, bridge, uh, his neck pickup on his Les Paul died. So obviously he takes the guitar to a music store and has it repaired. They took apart the pickup, fixed it, put it back together. And in putting it together, they... Uh, accidentally flipped over the magnet. The magnet went in the wrong side up. So, when it was all said and done, the pickup sounded glorious, the bridge pickup sounded glorious, and when he switched them on together, they sounded weird. What happened? When you flip over the magnet, or vice versa, when you connect the wires the other way around, you have now the pickups out of phase. Out of phase basically means that when you hit a note and this pickup makes the speaker move forward, this pickup at the same time does not make the speaker move forward, it's pulling it backward. So instead of adding the two signals of the bridge pickup, which is more nasal, and the neck pickup, which is warmer, instead of adding the signals uh, to each other and getting a really wide and broadband tone, you're actually subtracting them from each other. The pickups are actually fighting each other electromagnetically. So, what does that translate into? I will show you first the normal way that 99.9% .9 of guitars in the, in the world have it, and that is adding. Neck pickup, bridge pickup. And now I shall subtract them from each other. And it gives a really hollow nasal sound, which by itself could be useful to play some funky rhythm, but it really becomes useful when you can start blending those, uh, those uh, two sounds that are fighting each other. So that you can ch choose to have them fight to the max, or maybe a bit less, or maybe much less. So instead of, let's say you have the, uh, the neck pickup going, I'm going to go first back to additive to, you know, summing the sounds. So I have the neck pickup and I'm going to, I'm going to add the bridge pickup to it. Zero. You just add a lot of brilliance to it and it is really a cool sound. Now we go and do the same thing, but anti-phase, out of phase, they're now fighting each other. So as I bring up the bridge pickup, it's gonna strangle the neck pickup. First, the bridge pickup is all the way off, and the neck pickup is on. See, now it starts to get a bit more nasal, even more nasal. See, but that is too nasal for me right now, so I just roll it back a little bit. And 
and find my sweet spot. Um, this also is true for the other side. If you have the neck pickup, the bridge pickup all the way on, and you add the neck pickup to it, or rather, you start subtracting the neck pickup from it. Until you have them fighting to the max. This is great, but it becomes, in my opinion, even greater when I roll the mood knob all the way down. The uh, principle of the two pickups fighting each other remains the same. It's just that I thin out the sound even further. And now I can get some really, really cool sounds here. And you can also take them down a little bit further and play some really nice funky rhythm. Or find a little less aggressive balance. Alright, now on the three pickup guitar you have one more, uh, actually have two more positions that you don't have on the two pickup guitar. And one of them is all three pickups on. And you just have to finagle this switch between position three and two somewhere to find the spot where all of a sudden that third pickup comes on. All right. <laughs> It has a bit of a, like as if the guitar is trying to eat back its own sound, or like a really weird sound. And obviously, uh, that's only on the three pickup guitar. If you roll the moon knob all the way up, it becomes just bigger. Just adds a little bit of warmth to it. Then you have the other thing, because, because of the way I have this wired, when you switch on the middle and the bridge pickups on the position two, and you kill, you have both pickups on, but you kill the bridge pickup, now what you have left is the middle pickup. This would be both. Kill the bridge pickup, now you have middle all by itself. Which of course is also a sound that you do not get from every guitar. Uh, mood knob all the way down. So those are some possibilities. Now the one thing that you do not have on the three pickup that you have on the two pickup is position two on a two pickup guitar gives you bridge pickup full on and neck pickup tapped. So that's the one that you do not have on the three pickup. I wish they would come up with a uh, seven position <laughs> switch so I could actually have all that. But um, until they do, we'll just have to say you don't have it on the, on the three pickup. There is one really, really uh, advantageous uh, extra position that you have, and that is uh, you start emulating one of those, uh, you know, the old style ovation uh, electroacoustic guitars that you had in the 70s. Let's say you are hired to play for a singer, and the singer says, I need one acoustic intro on stage. Great. Now you have to, uh, you know, uh, string, pack, bring, tune, set up, and play an acoustic guitar just for one intro. 
great. Um, then comes the solo in the song, and now you wish you had your Les Paul around your neck. So what if you could do all that with just one guitar? Let's see if we can pull it off. I roll the mood knob all the way to zero, tone knob all the way to 10, put the, uh, the switch in the middle position to have neck and bridge pickups going, and now I barely switch them on. It really works best if you have the volumes really low and you play really loud. And now when you want to go to the solo, it's really just two buttons, the volume and the mood knob all the way to 10. And there you go, wail right away. <laughs> You know, and it's all going through a little high gain guitar amp. It's nothing with piezos going into the PA. Because the one thing that I really, really want to stress again, on my guitars, nothing is active. There is no uh, circuitry on board. There are no batteries. There is no phantom power. There are no solar panels. Uh, it's all just coils, feeding resistors and capacitors, feeding a cable straight into your amp. And that is really, I think, a great tone. Um, what can I say? If you have your own Taya guitar, I uh, recommend you really, really start experimenting with using all the knobs. Even if you left all the knobs on 10 all the time, you still have a glorious guitar. But really the, uh, the uh, rainbow of colors, of tones that are uh, available really only get accessed if you start using these uh, controls. And I recommend you do that. Now, if you do not have your Taya guitar, I recommend you get one. So thank you very much. For, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and we'll see you on, an, uh, on a guitar show or wherever. Thank you.